Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Merlock's Den. And finally we're here with Isaac's plate armour maintenance and pretty much info session. Yeah, yeah, it took a little bit while, got there eventually. <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty much what we're going to run through today is we do have a bit of a surprise of, as I said last video, we got a package from our friends at Legion. So after Isaac's little information session, we're actually going to do a little bit of a taste testing of some flavors they sent us and show you some of the products that they actually sent us. By the way guys, don't mind the noises you hear in the background. We do have a few bats in, in the tree behind my house. So yeah, they are being a bit annoying at the moment. So yeah. Yep, yeah, they're just out there causing a ruckus. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, Isaac, if you want to take us off with some info of plate armor. Sure, sure. I'll show you some of the bits of my set that I have here. We'll start off with a key piece, which is a breast plate. Breast plates can be a little bit uncomfortable, depending on how they're fitted, but they are very important. They keep you from copying real hard hits to the chest, so if you're a female LARPer, I would recommend investing in one because, as we all know, shots to the chest can hurt a hell of a lot. Yep. This one is uh, hand forged by a chap I know for reenactment, like the rest of my armor is. The main difference you'll find between reenactment armor and LARP armor, though you'll often see reenactment kits at LARPs, is that the reenactment armor will be thicker as it's made for fighting with steel weapons as opposed to foam. So the downside of that is that the kit will be a lot heavier. But you also know at LARP there's no way it's going to break. Yeah. So pros and cons there. I have ended up putting up a dint in someone's chest plate from cheaply made plate armour and yeah, that would not be able to stand up to the quality of these, of these chest plates yeah, if La Perra put a dent in this, I'd be pretty upset <laughs> because people routinely swing actual hammers and swords and things at me, so I'm glad it's a bit stronger than that one. <laughs> yep. After the breastplate, we have some arm armor. It is a little bit rusty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll put it on the demonstration. Yeah. So as you can see, it will attach by tied points either onto your gamson or onto the mat onto your chainmail if you wear chainmail with your plate, which I currently do. You see it's fully articulated, so you've got pretty good range of motion with it. It is fully encompassed all the way yeah. onto the wrist. Yep, straps up to around there, then around your bicep. They're pretty comfortable when you've got a Gamson on. On your bare yeah. skin, not so great because they can pinch, but oh, yeah. when you have a Gamson, they're quite good. They weigh probably a kilo, maybe, if that. Yeah, roughly a kilo at most, kilo and a half. Yeah, so you can, if you're wearing them for a long period of time, you will start to notice their weight. But for short periods of time, if you're just doing some fights and then getting out of the armor, it's, yeah, they're good. I fought at sword, one of the Swordcraft Quest events, I fought in my full plate armor for three hours, and by the end of it was still walking around okay, so once you get used to wearing it, it can be quite comfortable. After that, we have some greaves. These are fully encased. They can be one of the most finicky parts of a plate armor set. Because finding a way to suspend both your greaves and your upper leg harness can be a nightmare. There's historical ways to do it which are effective, but it can also be costly to get everything. Like a uh, pull point is like a vest in which you can attach your 
leg armor too. I unfortunately don't have the upper part of my leg armor here, but it gives you a pretty good idea how it works. So they just do up there and there, and for the upper part of the leg armor, the lower strap goes through this bit here. So it holds it off your foot. In mine, I've also put a piece of leather so that if it does slip down, you don't get a nasty bit of metal right onto the top part of your foot. Because when I first ever wore these, it didn't have that. And my leg armor did slip down when I was at a reenactment event. And when you've got a nice big bit of metal just pressing into the top of your foot, it's very unpleasant. Next, an often overlooked thing at last, but gauntlets. Great protection for your hands, so if you're fighting in the cold or fighting with people that just happen to do real hard hits, which some people do, yep. very handy. No pun intended. Yeah, that was unintentional. <laughs> but yeah, these ones have segmented lames, so you can move your fingers pretty well in them. They make a nice sound when you move them. Yeah. I need to reattach mine, obviously, to the glove because they were used in some uh, actual steel fighting and they've blown out, but good to have. The upsides to plate is really its protective quality and at most settings, plate arm will be the maximum amount of HP you can have, which if you've got a whole group of people all in plate armor, it can be very difficult to defeat them. So there's strategic benefits there. Shields and spears. Yeah, yeah, that can be pretty nasty. And Shields a lot of bows. Spears. Like, yeah, when you come up against another group of people and they're all in plate armor, there's a good chance, even if they don't fight as well as you, if you're not decked out the same way, they can outlast you if they can match you hit for hit. So there is a benefit to that. The downsides obviously being, as we've said before, fatigue. The stuff, yeah, fatigue, the stuff's heavy, it's hot, there's a cost also in it, plate armour tends to be quite expensive, and it can be expensive to get the other parts of the kit you need to actually wear it, so like your gamson costs money, the suspension for your leg armour, because it doesn't just sit on you, you've got to hold it up, because with it being heavy and gravity it just will fall. So I've, at the moment I'm using a weightlifting belt with some holes put all around it to hold my leg armor, uh, leg armor up because my paw point actually ripped through. So I've got to get a new one, but yeah, there's some definite advantages to plate. Do you have any, anything to put in? Uh, not really, you're actually a residential plate armor specialist. Um, but the next, day, the next talk is maintenance. Yeah, as you can see with a few of my bits, the people I lent it to didn't clean it. At least not properly. <laughs> <laughs> or it could have been like this when I gave it to them. That's probably the more likely scenario. <laughs> but it requires constant diligence because after every use, you have to wipe them down and re-oil them or you do start to get rust. And once you have a full bit of rusted armour, it is a pain to clean. My upper leg armour, which isn't here at the moment because one of my friends is still borrowing it. I, before the last large reenactment event I did, I just let it get real rusty. I wasn't too worried about it. Pulled it out of the box and the whole thing was orange. Yeah, that was a pain to clean. Yeah, it was more than a day's work to get in with all the different nooks and crannies of an articulated piece of leg armour. So you've got to be yeah, diligent and make sure you keep your gear clean. Other things like with mail is that water will make it rust. So some of the most fun I've had fighting at a LARP is in the rain. It just adds a whole different layer, but then when you realize afterwards that you've, you've got, got to quickly oil it up or at least chuck some WD-40 on it. Yeah, you've got to quickly wipe it down and re-oil it. So if you're someone who doesn't want to do a lot of maintenance on your gear, don't buy a plate. Go with something more simple and more easily controlled with either leather or chainmail. Yeah, because there is... The other downside to plate really is 
because it's individual plates riveted together, as you move, definitely, you know, the faster, stronger you move, for lack of a better term, is you do get wear and tear, so you will have rivets and things blow out, so you might be in the middle of doing something, overextend yourself a bit, and off pops one of the straps that keeps it on, so then, and then you know, you've got a, yeah, a bit of armour flapping in the wind, as it were. Yep. So there is... The benefits don't always outweigh the pro, I mean the cons, sorry, in that it's expensive, it can, just through general use, things pull through. I've probably repaired nearly every bit of plate I own. The breastplate, for instance, I had to recently replace the straps because they pulled through in a fight. So there's there's a lot of maintenance work. I think I do personally think it's worth it because I love plate. I like the I guess the feeling of walking in plate too. Yep. You feel like you're ten foot tall and invincible, which half, does help half, yeah. half the time you are. Yeah, half the time. <laughs> now, it does help to get into your character, definitely if you're playing like a knight or someone, because it is like a character ego boost, it's like a psychological thing when you're clanking around and stuff, and people kind of get out of your way too, yeah. when you're covered head to toe in steel. So yeah, for getting in character, it does have its benefits, but yeah, if you're not someone that wants to clean a lot and do a lot of maintenance, I'd recommend against it. If you're someone who does like doing that kind of stuff, so Trent's a pretty hands-on guy, so he'd probably enjoy having a suit of plate. Yeah, you and I always, whenever we got to clean up your armour before Abbey or any other festival, I always come over, we have some beers and chuck on some music and just spend the night cleaning. Yeah, so it, it can be good and that, that is good... fun, but if you're not someone who's inclined to do that kind of thing already, then probably not a great choice. But if you are, then all power to, to you. I love wearing it, obviously, and I've owned this set for four years now, yeah, maybe five. Four, four four and a half at least. Yeah, something like that. So it's got me through, little bits of repairs here and there, but you strike an imposing silhouette when you walk onto the battlefield. But that's the thing, it's, sure enough, it may need a bit of more, a bit more attention and detail when you're fixing it and all that stuff, but just like any armor, leather armor, chain mail, even just cloth, there's always bound to be something that happens and you gotta do repairs. Yeah, so if you can get your hands on some just to try it out, there is something satisfying about fighting a group of people who have very little armor, and you have a lot, because you, you feel like a bit like a tank as you lay waste to a group. I, I can't talk at the moment. <laughs> as you lay waste to a small group of people, which yeah, can be pretty fun. Um, we've addressed some suppliers of armor previously, Yeah, but we'll just reiterate a few. For, you can always look on eBay, but it's probably going to be very hit and miss. You could go to, there's many foreign smiths making stuff, so if you look at, like, if you're on Facebook or whatever, look at medieval, just medieval groups, trading groups and stuff, yeah, you can sometimes always, pick up some good deals on plate. There's yeah. always um, blacksmiths on medieval marketplace on Facebook that are always willing to make some armor, if you have the money to spend on it, make some custom armor. And there's, you can always go online to places like Make Your Own Medieval or um, Epic Armory. Yeah, uh, my reenactment helmet's from Make Your Own Medieval. It's really good. It's a great thing, it keeps me from getting my brain yeah. smashed in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then uh, for really beautiful armor, you could go to somewhere like Arm Street, as we've mentioned before. It will cost you, but it is ultimately worth it, I guess, or to me. <laughs> so other people might disagree, but I, I have some friends that have some Arm Street kit and it's just beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, there's, if you look around, anywhere that's selling medieval stuff in general tends to sell some kind of plate armour. The quality varies, but you get what you pay for. The more you pay, the better it's probably going to be. The less you pay, the less it hurts your wallet, but it may be uncomfortable. When I first started LARPing, I had a chess piece I bought off eBay, which at the time was great. I spent like 50 bucks on it. But uh, I realized after it tore all through my gams in and it was cutting into me and stuff that, yeah, it wasn't, probably wasn't the best thing to buy. But at the time, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. 
It's always good to start, start off small, then grow from there. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, as the second part to our video, as we had said in the last video, we were, have been sent something from our good friends at Legion Energy, and they have sent us some cool stuff. Like, for instance, this cool carry bag with their very cool symbol on there. Reminds me of like a Spartan star helmet. Yep. They also sent us a box of test flavors that we're gonna try for you today. Shall we read out the part of the little blurb on the box, you reckon? Yeah, go for it. Okay. And for all If you're a gamer, an athlete, a streamer or a content creator. That's us. That's us. That's us. <laughs> you are part of the Legion. Oh, yeah. We've designed these drinks to allow you to always perform at your best. I definitely need that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What is Legion Energy? Legion Energy is a range of Australian made sugar free powdered drinks formulated by leading food scientists. That's right, you heard it here. Yeah. It's actually from here from Australia, actually made in Brisbane. Nice, nice. In conjunction with gamers and elite athletes. Elite athletes, that's us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> to create a great tasting range of performance drinks with the goal of maximum focus and clarity of thought. There's a little bit more, and it reads very, very well. Think back to the days when you woke up and felt like you could conquer the world. I remember that. So those about days. twelve years ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's before my back started hurting. Yeah. You can now feel like this every single day. Oh yeah. I'm back in my prime. Your boss is gonna love you. Yeah. <laughs> Legion Energy stands head and shoulders above the rest as an energy supplement and features no sugary crashes or slumps. That's that's real good. Considering I'm someone that drinks a copious amount of energy drinks. Oh yeah, I drink god um ungodly amount of Rockstar Mother and all that stuff and it gives you that energy boost but you kinda of get that drop off afterwards. Yeah, not having that, very, very good. Legion Energy ships worldwide. So for our fans overseas, you can get some of this. Yep, yep. And supports gamers from every genre. We've got your back when it comes to tackling hours of dungeon raids. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need that for World of Warcraft. And those stressful battle royal matches. Yeah, I, I just wanted to read out the blurb because I liked it. So pretty much, Isaac actually will read off the box what flavors come in what one. Ooh. Will I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so in your focus and energy category, you have blue raspberry, cherry cola, cotton candy, which I believe we did try. Yeah. Grape, orange crush, pineapple, vanilla cola, and watermelon. Ooh, ooh. Actually, the watermelon one sounds nice. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good. In our hydrate and amino category, we have blue raspberry, grape, lemon lime, orange crush, and watermelon. Again, all sound like real good flavors. I'm, I'm excited. Oh yeah. And in for rest and recovery, we have green tea, something that you do traditionally yeah. drink yeah. to relax yeah, and mellow out. Yeah. Hot chocolate, another favourite of someone oh, yeah, who wants oh, yeah. to mellow out. Or as my wife has famously brought this fact up reading that is, unless it's hot, it's not a hot chocolate, it's a cold chocolate. <laughs> then lemon iced tea. Ooh, that sounds good as well. Yep. Um, just so you know, all the nutritional and all the facts and all that stuff will be down in the link in the description if you, in case you're interested in all that stuff. So yeah, if you are worried if you're allergic to anything in these drinks or anything like that, feel free to check out that link and it'll all be there. All the facts about these drinks will be there. Yep, all the info you need. Yep, pretty much. Now, enough of the science talk. Bring <laughs> me the drinks! Alright. Alright, now we're actually going to sit down and try out some of these drinks for you. First off, we're going to start, oh, what do you reckon? Start from left to right or right to left? 
I reckon we gotta save this one till the end because it's very okay. interesting. Okay, and just in case you guys can't see it in the camera, that's the hot chocolate. <laughs> um, we only got one rest and recover with this pack. Um, I think we got three of the focus and energy and two of the hydrate and amino. All right, let's give this a shot. First one is lemon lime. That one's actually not bad. It's kind of like a, um, a... Smells like lemon lime though. Lemon Gatorade is what I, what I can put my thumb on it. But there's no smell to the powder. Like it's, yeah, it's weird. Hmm. It's got a very mellow flavour. Even the powder doesn't look yellow like the liquid does. It just comes out white and then changes yellow as you mix it. And yes, all these are pre-mixed. Um, they are mixed with cold water. So I would recommend mixing it with cold water. It does affect the flavour. Um, whether you mix it with tap water, like room temperature tap water or cold water. I, I would say with the lemon lime, it'd be a very good drink to take with you to say work. Because it's very easy to drink, very mellow flavour, so you could sip it all day, and I think it would do you some good. Yeah. Alright, next one is blue raspberry. So, if you want to smell that. That one kind of tastes like um, grape flavoured nerds. Very pleasant smell to the powder as well. Yeah, that is an interesting taste. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up is cotton candy. That one actually tastes a lot. Really good. It's liquid cotton candy. Yeah, that's, that's there's no you, other words to describe it. That's all you can say about it is. Even the, even the powder smells like cotton candy. It's pretty much they've just liquefied cotton candy. And I think it has so, no sugar in it. It's some kind of sorcery, I'm telling you. <laughs> Alright, what's the next one, man? What do we have here? Watermelon. I like watermelon flavoured everything. So we'll see how this goes. Alright. Smells. And yet again, I'm not let down with my love of watermelon flavoured <laughs> stuff. This is great. The powder's not overpowering. It smells like watermelon, but not very strong. Stage hand is in trouble. Yes, very much so. Since I'm making noise anyway, I'm just glad that the watermelon is watermelon instead of sour watermelon. Yeah. So many watermelon you see flavored a things of... are sour watermelon, but that is delicious and refreshing. Yeah. yeah. So far, I think that might be my favorite. Yeah, so far the watermelon is my favorite. It does have a bit of a bitter aftertaste, like at the back of it. That's good. I but like yeah, it. like it's it. more I of like a drink liters of that. By by bitter aftertaste, I mean like it's more of a wake up drink. So you'll drink it and it'll taste normal like watermelon and all that stuff. And then there's that kick of energy on it. Yeah, it's like Wake a pleasant up. watermelon punch to the face. <laughs> 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 all right, now I'm moving on. Oh, I feel like, I feel like that somewhere, watermelon punch to the face. <laughs> Luckily all this can be edited out, so. No, I keep it in. <laughs> Orange crush. <laughs> Do I sir? It smells very... Very strong, like very citrusy. Yeah, yeah, very similar to that vitamin C kind yeah. of smell. It's got a very subtle taste. Luckily, it's not like drinking liquid vitamin C, so that's good. Yeah, it's not overpowering, like it's not... It's not a strong flavour like the cotton candy was. Not saying that the cotton candy was bad, so don't twist my words. Um, the cotton candy is nice, 
but it, the, the flavor is very strong and it'll punch you in the face. Yeah, the comb candy is more reminiscent of what a traditional energy drink would be like. Yeah, like Monster or whatever. Um, this on the other hand, it's very, it's very subtle. It, you get the um, energy boost, you get the um, all the good stuff that comes with it, and at the same time, it's not overpowering. But yeah, no, that's actually really good. Still no sugar. Like, they're geniuses. Yeah. Alright, and lucky... Lucky last. last. The hot chocolate. How you take a hot chocolate and turn it cold... It's not really hot chocolate anymore. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold chocolate. It's a cold chocolate. And, and here in Australia, we do have that. cold chocolates. They're called cold Milo's. Or Nesquik. It's... Smells like chocolate. I. Right. The moment of truth. <laughs> Even the powder, it smells like. It, it tastes like chocolate. What is this? There's some kind of mad alchemist at Legion. Even the um the powder smells like the Cadbury powder that you mix in with your with your milk. And so does the drink, apparently. It's liquid <laughs> chocolate. Like, what? Like, you kind of think, okay, chocolate powder, or chocolate style flavoured powder with water will just taste like watered down hot chocolate or whatever. It doesn't. It actually tastes like the whole lot. It tastes like it's got milk in it. It's got everything in it. So that is actually, I, I approve, yeah. Reminiscent of, like, Nesquik, but with water. It's interesting. So yeah, um... Now you may wonder, when someone says reminiscent of Nesquik, <laughs> what do you make with Nesquik? What is it, Trent? What do you milk. use? So, our stage hand ended up making us some of this Legion Energy with milk instead of water. And so I'm going to try it I'm excited. <laughs> it should be. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right. It's kept its lovely chocolatey smell. <laughs> I think I'm gonna keep this. Yep, go for it. <laughs> no, you, should, you have to try some. Right. That's great. Yeah, it tastes just like that's quick. Yeah. 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 Gonna have some more. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much this is got. This is pretty much going to be a not a regular thing because I doubt we'd be able to get that many people to send in stuff for us to review. But a once every now and then thing. Um, and yeah, pretty much this was great. This was great sitting down, helping out Legion by promoting their um, their product. I have to admit, I approve. Yeah, 100%. I could see myself switching from traditional energy drinks to Legion Energy. This exactly. is great. I'll be ordering some as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely will be getting hold of a couple flavours, or at least trying to get hold of a couple flavours, and I will bring them to the next Heroes Odyssey Games Day event, and get some of our fans out there to try it on camera, see what they think of it. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll have to get it to them quicker. I might drink it all myself. I know, right? That's why I'll hold them here at my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just so you guys know, this this video is not at all sponsored or partnered with Legion Energy. Not saying that we don't want to be. <laughs> We'd love that. You know our number. Give us a call if you're interested. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I really agree. Like. All the different types, focus and energy, amino and hydrate, and even the rest of them relax. Is it's all good. They all do their separate purposes, and yeah, I still can't believe that half these drinks don't have don't have any sugar in them. Yeah, there's definitely when you can see like cotton candy is pretty much just sugar. Yeah, and they've maybe like managed to replicate the taste of cotton candy without the sugar. I'm my mind is blown. Yeah. Um. But yeah, actually, we're going to do our first thing that I said we'd be doing a few episodes back, which is our first shout-out. Alright, this shout-out is to Finn Nicole. 
Thank you very much for being a subscriber and a fan of ours. Hope you guys like the video and keep watching for more. If you guys want to be the next um, shout out, go on the go on the roll to become one. All you have to do is just subscribe and keep watching the videos. Every um, like and subscribe and comment, everything, all of that does help. Um, in the last video I did say that I will be putting up a um, Facebook page in the near future for selling new merchandise that we'll be, we'll be coming out with. I am also starting up a Patreon page for us Ooh. to help us out with keeping the um, channel going because it does cost money, it does come out of our personal pockets um, and we want to be able to give you guys the best that is out there or the best that we can provide and yeah all that stuff will be coming up in the future of what tiers will give you what and all that once we've sorted it all out yeah, yeah. so yeah if you like this video please like subscribe hit that notification bell to be notified every time a new video comes out and until next time Take it easy. Keep being awesome.